Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. This is part four of What If Deku Had Toji's Heavenly Restriction. As always, if y'all enjoy, show some love, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. In my community tab poll um, or post, I did a poll and I asked if y'all wanted me to go back to daily uploading. Um, I only wanted to know how many people would be interested in seeing that. Um, and I literally told myself that if it was like 80%, I wouldn't do it, but it had to be like something like 90, 95%. And I consider doing it once again. Okay, with that said, I am going to try my best and I want to commit to doing daily uploads. So hopefully by the end of this month, you're like, yeah, Golden did full daily uploads. Hopefully I didn't let anybody down with that one. Now, <laughs> with that said, I'm not going to waste much more of your time because I want to get right into part four because I want to get into exactly where we left off. Let's get it. Azuka Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo, two people that absolutely, well, despise each other you could say now izuku doesn't hate bakugo necessarily he doesn't really think he's the best of all people but he also doesn't think he is horrible you could say bakugo on the other hand absolutely despises izuku now probably because he's stronger than him and also because bakugo didn't get the chance to actually fight izuku one-on-one -on -one to prove that he's actually stronger than him you know in the sports festival but obviously, um, he wasn't able to get that chance, and he had a bit of a tantrum, you could say. But this time around, they have to fight side by side and go up against the strongest hero alive, All Might. Yeah, they're going to have to go face to face with All Might. Some of their, um, well, you know, greatest inspirations and also probably is up there with the, the role models of the world. And they're going to have to take him on together. Now, Azuku has felt the power of All Might, has felt that he actually could possibly be stronger than All Might, but is all that truly true? Because All Might himself has never gone fully all out against Azuku. He's always, you know, tempered his, well, power. He doesn't want to kill the kid. So what kind of level is Azuku truly on? And is the level that he, he is on, is it well lower than you could possibly imagine maybe it's extremely lethal maybe he can actually go blow to blow with someone like all might or is there a chance that he can even get stronger well those are questions that even azuku has for himself and he's going to have to realize all of those um expectations when he takes on all might with bakugo the gates would swing open and they would progress through the city and quickly they would realize that All Might is waiting for them. All Might would begin punching the air, sending compressed air straight toward both Azuku and Bakugo. They would try to dodge, and it would be pretty difficult, but a little bit more difficult for Bakugo. Azuku would try to make some sort of a plan, but Bakugo would go head first, not even thinking about getting help from Azuku. Quickly, Bakugo would realize that he definitely will need help because he does absolutely no damage to All Might at all. And it seems like All Might's not even wearing restraints by any means, being that of the normal weights that all the other heroes were wearing as well. This would lead to Bakugo getting absolutely tossed around, and then eventually Azuku would help him, but he would quickly realize that he's not going to be able to critically injure All Might to a large extent, but luckily he has other ways of actually effectively beating All Might. And those ways involve the scarf that he's been training with, and more specifically the scarf that Aizawa helped him train with. This scarf is something that is very very lethal and lethal in the way of being able to utilize it in a very 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 um positive or very good way for himself in terms of a fighting tactic he would wrap all might up and quickly all might would realize how strong the material is not being able to actually just break through it easily leaving leading to openings that azuku can take landing extremely extremely strong blows on all might and being able to actually hurt him quite a bit. Now, this one it hurt All Might in the degree of 
like, oh, it's it's injuring him extremely bad. It would hurt him in, in the act of as if you got punched in the stomach by somebody without you realizing it. It would hurt a little bit, but then you would be able to brush it off eventually. And All Might would continue to feel that way. It's not like it's some crazy lethal blow that feels like a stabbing of a knife or something. But it's obvious that his durability is way stronger than Azuku even realized. And he quickly even realizes that he needs to be able to get even stronger than what he is now, but his potential should be limitless. At the end of the day, he can truly, truly level up further beyond than you could possibly imagine. He probably just needs another event to occur, something like the Sludge Villain attack. Now, he would go head to head with All Might and this fight would be a spectacular one. One that everybody would watch in awe because the smaller frame but also the speed of Azuku is effectively subduing All Might. At the end of the day, All Might is big and bulky and he may be extremely quick but he's not quick in the act of short and stub and, and, and short and quick punches. Now, but Azuku is able to easily do that. Get on the inside, hurt him to the body, hurt, hit him in the in, in the face, and be extremely quick to avoid um, the punches in general. Exactly what he was able to do against the Nomu. Now, All Might may be theoretically quicker than the Nomu in terms of the bulkiness of the Nomu was a little bit off-putting, but All Might himself, if he lands a blow on Azuku, it will hurt quite a bit. Like, quite a bit. And Azuku realizes this and even understands that to a large degree, so he makes sure that he just doesn't get hit. And this battle goes on for quite a bit, and Bakugo tries to get on this battle as well. But it's obvious that Bakugo has no place in this fight at all. And then eventually, Azuku would see that All Might is running out of juice, and he would think to himself that he's gonna take his leave now. He would kick All Might in the leg, dropping him down to one knee, and then kicking him in, a, in the back, sending him toward like this, uh, this so, some sort of a bench of some sorts, and he would then grab Bakugo and take off running to the exit. He would toss Bakugo through the exit as he walks through as well, and they would be deemed the winners, and th that would be the correct choice. I mean, we don't want to take on All Might head-to-head -head for the entirety of the fight, and also somehow cuff him. It would probably be definitely better to go and quote unquote go get reinforcements because that's the whole entrance exam stigma. But still, Bakugo is not happy about this at all. He wants to still fight All Might. He wants to now fight Azuku. He is absolutely pissed and he's kind of having a temper tantrum until Aizawa tells him to shut his mouth or he's going to hit him in the back of the head and knock him out cold. So Bakugo shuts up and he basically gets them all prepped and ready to go, or Aizawa does, gets them all prepped and ready to go for the um, for his training camp. Since most of the people here have passed, they will all then go to the forest training camp. But of course, we are dealing with a couple people that didn't pass, so they will also have to deal with some extra classes while over there. Luckily, Izuku is not in that boat. But still, they're going to have to deal with some, some things in, in, in its totality. Now, they would head off on a bus not too long um, or not too long in the future. And when they, when they arrived, they would stop at a nearby mountain. Now, this mountain would be a bit suspicious because why would you just stop out of nowhere? Now, they would all be talking about the forest training camp, what it's going to be like, and even would meet the wild wild pussycats, which would be kind of interesting for Azuku because he is a pretty big fan of them but he would call them um, pretty old I mean you know no disrespect but that's what he would call them in a way but after all of that is said and done everybody would get shoved off the mountain getting thrown into the forest training camp and have to literally run over or fight through a ton of these stone like monsters all the way until to get to the camp and that's basically their training. Now, during this time, though, Azuku would immediately dodge this wave of mountain that was going to push him off, and he would ask why they would even intend to do that, and if, if there's some, like, absurd training or something down there. And they would say, yeah, that is 
exactly why they were going to throw him down there. So if he doesn't mind jumping off and going to fight those monsters with his classmates, that would be good. And Izuku shrugs as he jumps off the cliff, and he goes to absolutely destroy as many monsters as he can. Remember, Izuku is under the mindset still that he can get stronger, that he can get better, he can get faster, he can get more lethal, and he truly believes that he can be at an exceeding higher level than All Might himself. Now, is that belief a little bit of an extra extraordinary belief? Maybe just a little bit. But he feels that there could be another level to his strength. There could be another level to his raw power. He doesn't know 100%. He knows that his senses and his strength, his speed and all that, they're pretty good. But he feels like they could be even better. Like to another complete level. And the Forest Training Camp is going to help them do exactly that. And Izuku is able to more or less get, get most of that training throughout this entire Forest Training Camp. But unfortunately, everything would get cut short when the villains of well the league of villains begin to siege and take over the entire camp and quickly azuku would realize that one little kid by the name of koda one that didn't give him too good of a welcoming is actually on top of a mountain currently and will definitely need some sort of help and that's exactly where azuku would go and when he would arrive he would see somebody and a giant somebody gra about to grab Koda. Immediately, Izuku would dash in, kicking the giant big dude in the face, sending him toward toward the like the stone wall of the cliff. Now, immediately he would grab Koda, telling him to hold on tight as he's going to immediately run over to get him to safety. But as he's about to run, it seems like this giant dude is currently getting up. This dude is by the name of Muscular. Muscular is extremely, extremely powerful, and it's going to be a match for Izuku, at least to a certain extent. Izuku himself, though, would not want to stand his ground. He wouldn't want to just stand there and let Koda take any fire or any 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 chance of him getting hurt so when muscular is about to actually attack them he would just jump off and begin running extremely fast toward the camp to drop off coda and then he's going to come back and make sure that this guy can't hurt any of his classmates and he's going to make sure that that is exactly what is going to happen he would take off, leave Koda at the camp, and then tell Aizawa that there is a giant, giant um, freak of nature over in that direction, and that he needs to make sure that he can stop him right now. And now Aizawa would tell him that that's not the best idea. He is running into unknown territory now by running over in that direction, but Azuku says that none of his classmates are going to be able to take him down. And he's going to make sure that he doesn't, um, he doesn't actually affect or even hurt any of his other classmates. He takes off as he meets Muscular once again, and Muscular says that he likes the kid. He thinks he's cool. I mean, no other kid like him would think, yeah, let's go back and actually fight this guy that I just escaped from. But Izuku says that this is not going to be a fight. This is far from it. He just threatened a little kid, and also he's threatening even more kids, even though he is a kid, to be fair. But he is threatening even more people so that this this won't be just your normal fight this is going to be an absolute beatdown. Izuku would reveal this baton like weapon but it's kind of like a bow staff attached to many other bow staffs he would then reveal his scarf once again and he would begin to levitate the scarf using it kind of as extra limbs you could even you uh you could even say he would begin to crack muscular like crazy hitting him and trapping different limbs with his scarf hitting him in the face the body the legs everywhere and he begins to tell muscular that he may be built extremely powerful he may his muscles may um just burst out of his shirt and burst out of his body he doesn't care because he may have more muscles but all of those things are just weak spots he begins to hit them exactly where he needs to hit the muscles of muscular and it begins to basically cripple muscular muscular is unable to move at it at his full capacity and his body is crumbling and when i mean crumbling i mean crumbling his body is breaking down and destroying itself. Azuku continues to beat the living heck out of Muscular. B 
beating him down extremely bad to the point that muscular can barely even move he even tries to unlock his you know further muscular form trying to kind of burst through this 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 these injuries that are currently be, being just thwarted upon him but even that doesn't work azuku says that his his quirk is so basic so simple and it's funny because he's currently losing to somebody without one and he would then look extremely extremely shocked muscular would be out of his mind shocked as he would get cracked over the head with with his baton like weapon or Zuku's baton like weapon or bow staff like weapon and he would be knocked out cold Azuku would then go through the forest helping as many people as possible but eventually it would get to the point where it seems as if they got the person they wanted and that would be Bakugo. Azuku would see one by the name of Dobby grabbing Bakugo and pulling him backwards and telling them and he basically is telling them to stay away and stay still or else this kid's going to go up in flames. Azuku is shocked to see Bakugo being being taken away and he's about to make a move trying to stop him but even Bakugo's eyes would tell him to not to don't move and don't try to save him because everybody could just get hurt by doing so. And then it would lead to the kidnapping of Bakugo. And let's just say Azuku would not take kindly to this. Azuku would be a totally different person at this point. He would be enraged. Azuku not even being injured, he would be gone in a matter of a split second. They would they would be leaving the forest training camp and Azuku would be gone. No sight of him, no word of him. Nobody even knows where he's where he's at. He's not at the hospital, he's not at UA, he's not at home. He is nowhere to be seen. And Azuku is currently, all he's doing is searching for Bakugo. That's it. He wants to make sure he can find him. And he knows that his extra senses could lead him exactly there. He studies the entirety of the cities. He tries to hunt through. He thinks about different locations that were attacked. He thinks about other places that were attacked. But he just can't find him. He just can't. But eventually... He would get a text from somebody telling him to meet him at a specific place. And when he does, he would actually see somebody he recognizes being that of Momo Yayorozu. Momo would say that he that she knew that he would eventually come back. And she would say that she knows that she can't convince him to, to not do anything stupid. But still... She's going to make sure that at least he has the information that he needs. Handing over this tracker that is actually tracking exactly where Bakugo is at this moment and where he currently could be at the moment based on just the no moose tracking device that is on the back of him. Now this would lead Azuku to finding the somewhat location of where Bakugo is but the heroes would be not too far behind a couple hours later. But of course, Azuku would be kind of waiting and staking out just the perfect time to siege on through. And he wouldn't even wait for the heroes to arrive, busting through, immediately taking out Shigaraki, thinking that he's the biggest threat, knocking him out with one kick to the face and immediately fighting off the rest of them as he shatters the shackles that are on Bakugo. And Bakugo begins to unleash hell as well blasting them in the face and absolutely scorching some of them immediately. Azuku says that he knows that he doesn't like fighting alongside him, but this time around, let's have some let's have some fun and actually work together. Bakugo would smirk and say and say that fine, for this time, maybe. As they begin to beat the League of Villains down together, and soon the walls would shatter down, being that the heroes have now arrived. But what they didn't expect is that somebody else is currently lurking and somebody else is currently watching. A portal would open up beneath both Bakugo and Azuku, and also underneath all of the unconscious League of Villains members, taking them all to the same place. Bakugo and Azuku would, would now be right next to all for one. 
all for one would would be telling both of them that they have such great untapped potential and they could be amazing truly amazing and they could truly affect this world more than they could possibly imagine but before he could even finish a sentence Bakugo would unleash a clip in his gauntlet shooting a ton a ton of explosions at all for one he tells all for one while, while doing this that his little protégés were really stupid to keep some of the technology and all of those things around especially when all it takes is for him to get out and now he can utilize them and immediately all for one would brush this explosion off and try to grab bakugo but a punch from azuku and then immediately a punch from all might sending him straight to the ground stops all for one in his tracks during this you see shigaraki and the rest of the league of villains out cold and ba and, he, and izuku tells bakugo to make sure to round them up that we cannot allow them to get away once again and make sure that they cannot um conflict in the battle with with all for one and immediately he would or bakugo and izuku would go and try to round up the villains rounding them up in a way where the police officers can 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 cuff them in court canceling cuffs and and more and more stuff like that all for one tries to get them out of there but unfortunately he's unable to do so just based on how quick azuku is and how quick he is to make sure that no portal can go and capture them at all and with the arrival of aizawa it massively helps them so that there there is no portal shenanigans at least in terms of kurogiri and other people like that now all might and all for one are going blow for blow at this point but it seems like all for one has the advantage and it seems like all for one is actually putting a pretty good beating on all might and all might seems to be slowly but surely losing his grip but luckily enough all might's not alone because azuku comes out of nowhere landing a kick to his face and all might would then land a punch to his stomach immediately switching the entirety of the fight on its head and soon while all for one tries to get up and even shoot tendrils at both azuku and ba or bazuku and all might a punch would then come from somewhere else landing flush to all for one's face cracking and even shattering his mask and this punch was from mirio togata all three of them stand head to head with all for one and soon they would clash over and over and over again but it seems like all for one still has a couple tricks up his sleeve he knows that a three versus one is not very comparable to himself and he knows that he really can't take them on on his own but what he does know is that someone someone that is standing right in front of him has a quirk that is very very special and well this is where he's miscalculated he believes that azuku truly has a quirk a quirk not only similar to all might's but maybe even exactly like his own or like all might and he believes that even if it isn't exactly what all might's is it could be similar enough to change the course of the battle so using one of his many quirks, he separates all three of them just enough and just enough time to grab onto Azuku and hold him by the neck and then tell him that his quirk will be used for something and a and something a greater and most and most higher purpose. And Azuku would be struggling to try and get rid of uh, try to get off of uh, all for one trying to get loose, but then soon all for one would realize he would be shocked what happened what's going on nothing is changing why is nothing changing and then azuku who's currently choking at this moment would be laughing just a little bit he would kick all for one off of him and then tell him that the thing is is he has no quirk not one at all all for one would be completely in shock saying that he, he he's useless then he means nothing as he shoots tendrils at Azuku, and when the tendrils hit him, they shatter. They shatter to pieces. Everyone currently there, Mirio, people watching, All Might, they're shocked. Those same tendrils were ones that they were deathly afraid of. 
ones that they felt if hit, it would wound them massively. Azuku just tank them. Azuku would look at his body and say that he knew something was up, that something felt different, that something was definitely, definitely different. And he tells All For One that he just unlocked something for him and he doesn't even realize it. All For One would immediately see as Azuku would dash at him, landing a clean punch to his face, slamming him against the ground as All Might would then wind up his United States of Smash and Mirio Togata would do exactly the same, landing clean blows to All For One as he lays there completely unconscious and it seems like the group of villains, All For One and the League of Villains, have been officially captured and will now be put away for everything they've done to the world and Japan. They are put away, arrested, and now it seems as if the world is safe from them. But at the end of the day, not everything, not everyone will ever be safe. Because there are many, many villains out there and many, many villains lurking. But Azuku would head back to UA and he would get into some massive trouble. Massive trouble. I mean, so much so that he would be forced to do some heavy cleaning throughout the entirety of UA. He would have to do a lot of extra training that Aizawa would set up for him, and he would not be allowed to actually be a part of some of the fun, more fun training that they, they would end up doing as a punishment as well. This would lead him to the very next step in his hero journey, but even that next step, or uh, Aizawa, excuse me, would tell him that Yes, he wants him to get his provisional hero license because he believes that that is a massive step for him as well, but it's not going to be that easy because since he's gotten so powerful and so strong, supposedly even stronger than All Might, then he wouldn't mind actually being restricted, right? He would take the scarf, take the weaponry, and also give him massive amounts of weights to put on his ankles and arms and say that he's going to have to feel the pain that Aizawa or himself had to go through when he was teaching and fighting against some of the students during the final exam. And I, immediately, Izuku thinks that this is extremely unfair. Like, he's going to have to go against some very strong people, especially in this provisional hero licensing exam. He could get extremely hurt by having all of these, um, these weights on. Aizawa would say, you know what? You're right. And he decides to even add more weight so that Izuku can get even more of a training. And immediately, Izuku would shut up, realizing exactly what's going to happen if he continues to yap on. So he decides he's going to keep his mouth shut and be quiet because his next step is the provisional hero license, license exam and he's going to have to take on some, of, some very strong people or strong students and also have to learn even more about being a hero than just being powerful. But that is going to have to wait for the next part of what if Deku had Toji's Heavenly Restriction or part 5. Not sure how many parts this is gonna be, so I don't know, I mean, if y'all enjoy it, show some love, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. Um, depends on how I wanna pace it. Could be another like two parts left in the, uh, the series, so enjoy it while it's here, enjoy it while it lasts. Um, as always, like I said, make sure to show some love by leaving a like and a sub and comment, commenting down below and all that good stuff. And yeah, that's all I got to say. I hope y'all enjoyed and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.